Thanks very much for joining me again. This week's river pattern is the Grunter. It's a bit of a beast, as you can see here. It's my take on it. And it's a great early season trout pattern for those of you that are filling your boxes in anticipation for the coming season. So, without further ado, let's get into it. In the vice then is a Hanak H100 barbless hook and it's at size 10. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to cast thread on. I'm going to add a little hot spot in the back. Now what I'm using is this um, UV hot spot resin. It's from Troutline and it, this is the neon red. It comes in a little tub. It's fairly thick stuff. I've been using it for a little while now and... Uh, it's really easy to use for this kind of thing, for creating a hot spot. So I'm just going to open my vise up, and I want it to be near the back of the hook. So I'll just come in there. And if you've got a vise that rotates, it makes your life a lot easier, I must say. I mean, you can do this without the aid of a rotating vise, but this just makes it a whole lot easier. So I've got a little spot on there. I'm just going to replace the lid. And while you're replacing the lid, it will actually move round and become just in the right position for you. So we're resin. It's very thick, this one, and it doesn't take much effort to make a little bulb like this at the end of the fly. Now, a lot of the resins I've tried in the past have been um, just too watery. You, you've got to work at the speed of light to, to get the effect you want. But with this, you've got a bit of time to, to um, let it work itself round to the shape that you want. And I'm fairly happy with that. Okay. So, next then. The thread I'm going to use is the uh, Ultimate Tine Silk from Fish On. And this is the Steel Grey. And as ever, with the Vivas type and Tine Silk, I'm going to just add a little bit of super glue to the shank of the hook. And this just stops fly rotation down the line. So I'll just catch that in. Doesn't take much super glue, just a little bit. And then I can take away my waste. Next, I'm going to add in some rib. Now you can use silver or gold, whatever takes your fancy really. I've used um, buzzer wrap for this. And they all look pretty good, but today I'm going to use the, the Danville's fine wire and it's gold. So I've already taken a little bit off to work with. And I'm going to capture that in. Not the complete length of the shank, but probably about two eighths of an inch from the eye. And then I can bring that all the way back on my side to where my um, hot spot begins. So we've got a ribbon, that's uh, perfect. And now what I want to do is bring my thread all the way up to where my rib finishes. Now you can't quite see, I'll just turn the vise so you can have a quick look. So I've run the gold rib up to about two eighths of an inch back. I'll just lock that off again. And I'm going to add a little bit of wax to my tine silk just to help me grip in the next material. Now the next material then is um, CDC and this is the Ultra Select CDC from Troutline and it's grey in colour and I've selected um, four plumes. I know it seems like a lot but this is a big fly uh, and it's meant to be fished in riffly fast water 
So that's why I'm using the amount of CDC arm. I'm just lining up the points here, which I should have done before, but I got waylaid. So I've got all my, my fibers here. I'm going to turn that round now in my fingers and just capture that in about just shy of an eighth of an inch back from the, the eye of the hook. So once I've got that into position with a few wraps, I can then come in with my trusty snips and cut at an angle towards the back of the fly. Don't discard your waist uh, with a CDC. You can always use it for other, other types of flies. Then I'm going to just build a taper into the body, which is easy now because once you've tied the CDC in, it almost creates the taper for you naturally. But if you're not happy with it, you can just work on it a bit. Bringing it all the way to the back where your hot spot is again. So next then, I'm going to use some of the uh, Trout Stalker Dubbin. And this is the Tweak Natural. If you don't have this, um, you can use normal Squirrel Dubbin. And I'm sure it will give you just as good an effect. So... I'm just dubbing this on now to my thread. doesn't need to be a hard dub. You want to pick some of this out with your brush um, later on. So just dub it lightly onto your thread. And then slowly, or not so slowly as the case may be, you can build your body. I've got a little bit too much, so I'm just going to remove that. Capture it in. And you'll see that I've left quite a significant amount of room here. It's not quite an eighth of an inch, but it's uh, it's certainly two or three millimetres. Next, we're going to tie in our, um, our hackles. It's a double hackled um, fly. And the two hacklings I'm going to use is the, the English partridge. I've already selected a feather off of that cape. And an old generic cape here. Now, this has seen, seen its day, really. But the feathers here at the bottom can still be used for flies like this. So that's what I'm going to use. Now, I've already selected one of the feathers. And I'm going to remove the waist bit I don't need at the bottom. I've left a tiny stock to catch in. Maybe too tiny. So I'm just going to remove just a little bit, a few more fibres. Add a bit of wax to get some grip on it. And then I'm going to capture that in. Just in behind. Next, I've got uh, an English partridge hackle that I've already pre-prepared. Now, my, my English partridge cape, you'll have seen it before, it's... Um, it really is past its sell-by date, so the feathers are rather weak. Let's hope that it doesn't impede the fly being tied. So, what I'm going to do first of all then, is bring my most delicate feather, which is the English partridge, around first. Now, I would like to have done this in the opposite way, and brought the bigger feather over first, but... I've just found with the partridge cape that I'm using, it doesn't doesn't suffer any kind of pressure on it. So once I've got a couple of, ah, see what I mean. There we go. Come on, play nice, play nice. Now as I turn it, the normal scheme of things, I would be in with my fingers, really trying to get this to open out for me. But with this, I've got to be so careful. So I think I've got all I'm getting out of this hackle. I'm going to come through now, catch the end. I think I'm resolved to buying a new, a new cape, actually. Breaks my heart, but 
it's uh, this is no longer fit for purpose. Once you've got it in place, yeah, thanks for that. You can remove your excess. So then, this feather should go a lot better. I'm going to catch that in at the end, and it's much longer and easier to work with. So if I catch that in, this should now work its way through the English partridge and just mix in nicely. Now, I don't know how this is for you, but I think I'm making a right pig's ear of this. But um, sometimes when I'm tying these, I think, oh, this is all going wrong. And I watch it back. It's actually not too bad. So I'm hoping that's the case here. Just trying to bring that English partridge just over that last bit. And that's looking not too bad now. I'm, I'm fairly pleased how I've recovered that. So I've, I've got my thread now in behind my hackle. I don't want to catch any of my CDC. A couple of turns. Then I'm going to bring everything back. So I've brought my thread to the front of the hook now. And I've got some fairly firm wraps going in there. So that I can pull that away. Then to finish off, I'm simply going to add a little bit of CD, uh, sorry, a little bit of um, UV resin with my brush. This is the Solaris Bone Dry. And bring it over like so. Now, one of the things I love about the, the Ultimate Tine Silk is once you've got that half hitch in, you can bury your thread and it just pulls away. Perfect. So I'll just lift that out of the way. Cure that off. And there we go. Last but not least, you can come in with your brush if you wish. Tease out a few of the fibres to suit yourself. That'll do me. And what I would do before this goes in the box, it would get covered in uh, permafloat or muslin and be ready to go. There we go. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please remember to do so. And I'll see you all next time. If you want to make them up, that's how to do it.